Hello, everybody. Um, hello again to those who heard me talk before. Uh, my name's Shane O'Rourke. I'm the Technical Services Manager here at Civil Survey Solutions, uh, and I've been gifted with the opportunity to host uh, this session. I'll be doing very little. Um, it's very much a titular role, um, but I'll be uh, handing over to Jonathan and also monitoring uh, Q&A. So, uh, Jonathan, you are there. Audio is, is... I am. You can hear me? There we go. We got you. Excellent. So uh, thank you, Jonathan, for uh, running the session. Uh, everybody, if you don't know Jonathan, uh, he has been with us for a little over five years now. Um, prior to that, he worked in um, a whole range of consultancies, um, dealing with lots of civil uh, engineering designs. He's got a wealth of experience. Um, this session, uh, whilst it says lot grading, is, is really about showing you techniques to do uh, that more difficult ad hoc design where you're not really um, able to deliver the entirety of it uh, based on cross sections. So Jonathan's really going to drive to you um, some techniques and methods for you to build whatever models um, you may need and also to get cross referencing back to other features. Jonathan, I think without any further ado, I might um, hand over to you. Thank you very much for the intro, Shane. Um, I have to say this is the first time I've actually presented one of these webcasts in 2020. Normally I'm uh, doing Shane's job and introducing um, and also it's the first time I've done a webcast in my slippers um, because I'm working from home as I'm sure many of you are. So a uh, number of firsts for me in uh, 2020. Um, so as Shane's already indicated we're doing um, lock grading with civil site design today and as much as anything this is about techniques and using tools within civil site design um, really to, to the best of your ability and also really just utilizing the full extent of the tool. So what we'll do is we'll just quickly flick through a couple of um, PowerPoint slides just to talk about what we're up to today. The takeaway from today is hey yes we are doing a lot grading scenario we're going to be grading a parcel of land but it's all about use of a selection of tools and as, as it says on the first point within civil site design and using them effectively okay there are a lot of tools in civil site design which you may have sort of dabbled with or sort of semi-explored but haven't really had the chance to sort of work with properly part of this webcast as i've said is utilizing the existing functionality um, and again you may have for example been using the latest vertical grading editor and you may have watched the webcast last week and realized there's a whole load of stuff in the vertical grading editor which you don't even know about um, this webcast is again to try and flesh some of those tools out and show you even in just general discussion what they do we are going to highlight or I'm going to highlight a few of the newer tools within civil site design um, certainly for those of you that have been using the software for a long time may not have even been aware that there is a new vertical grading editor, which came out last March, but also in association with that, some newer tools, and tools that have also been enhanced and improved. The purpose of today is also show you all of these together in a generic workflow scenario. So we're not saying, hey, this is how you, you know, do lock grading, and uh, this is how you use these particular tools in this scenario, and you apply this to every other. This is really a very typical scenario, which we're trying to show you and really employ all of the relevant tools from which hopefully you can then apply into other scenarios. So a lot of what I'm doing today is actually on our relearning course. So if you haven't been to our um, uh, e-learning uh, module uh, or school, as it were, have a look at the Civil Site Design website. You'll see um, there's on the resources pull down, there is e-learning or training. There is an e-learning pull down. And a lot of what we're doing today is actually covered in actually a road reconstruction uh, setup on that particular um, course. So well worth having a look. Today, however, uh, we're going to be focusing on three kind of core areas. We're going to be looking at this particular parcel of land at the top of the uh, screen here. So this is sort of pre-development, this is post-development. This is going to be parcel one. And what we're looking to do is achieve slopes no steeper than 5% through this particular parcel. And by doing so, we're going to employ the uh, creation of a retaining wall to manage the elevational changes, which, you know, manually, you could probably do this right now, um, just working out the elevations yourself. Um, but what we're going to do is let the software take the brunt of the hard work, including marrying up to the road design at either end. Okay, so this doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, a retaining wall and lock grading scenario, as I've said. This could be employed in scenarios where you're trying to match up to existing beaches, working on the existing road, 
commercial development, whatever, you can apply all of these skills. And then lastly, we're going to try and produce um, some cross sections and long sections. As I say try, we are going to produce them. Um, there's no trying about it. We're going to do those at the end. So we've got quite a bit to get through. Um, the workflow is this. We're going to have a quick look at the site really just show you what's been created with civil side design. This is not a naked site starting from scratch. We're actually opening up an existing project. We're going to create some grading strings. If you haven't used grading strings before, we'll do a very small amount of discussion as to why you would use them in this scenario, um, how they can be useful. Um, we'll look at the grid editor, which was briefly mentioned by uh, Terry in last week's vertical grading editor. Um, webcast, look at how we can use one of the tools in there to set up elevations. But really, the elevations for this particular wall are going to be set up based on using design constraints. And some of you may have used design constraints in the past and they've been very popular going through the design data form. Today, we're going to be showing you through the vertical grading editor in association with the design constraint, which is basically going to enable us to project 5%. We're going to then use something called auto profile. Okay, that's going to enable us to try and match onto or use the design constraint. Okay, a tool which is underutilized, I would say, and uh, maybe not really well understood within the software is a tool called Surface Extend. It has other names as well, which we'll show you um, whilst we're using the um, whilst we're in the middle of the workflow. And then following that, threads. Um, I've I've seen team uh, teams and individuals within teams that have civil site design use these to a very very good uh, very good extent. Um, really, really well used, um, and we'll um, we'll talk about those and show you how we can basically have the software automate these three middle portions for us without us having to necessarily do anything. We'll then look at model builder, combining the wall with the row design, and then plotting the whole thing and uh, showing you how we can resolve that. So we've got a lot to get through. I'm just going to um, just press enter here and leave the PowerPoint. And hopefully you're all now seeing my CAD environment. So I'm going to be using civil site design in AutoCAD today. Now, really, none of what we're doing in respect of this webcast is going to be specifically related to the requirement of needing civil 3D. OK, so um, everything we're doing is purely pretty much all within the roads tab. OK, if there is reference to um, uh, an alternative button, which maybe you don't have in civil 3D, it's unlikely, but if there is, I will mention it, okay? But we are running the AutoCAD version, and majority of what we're doing is gonna be through the Roads tab. Um, let's just have a quick look at the project. So this is actually the result of the e-learning project. So if you do happen to go on the course, it's, met, it's called um, Civil Site Design Fundamentals Metric. We take you through this very long workflow, which exposes you to no end of different tools within the software. And this is a, a version of the resulting um, project. So let's have a quick look at Model Viewer. We're having a look at Model Viewer just to get a, an, an idea as to what's going on with the project. And this is how things look. So just to give you an idea, in the um, e-learning course, we get you to create three grading strings. In fact, they're the first things you actually create in civil site design after a surface. And those three grading strings are here. Uh, so you've got a basin, a building pad, and we've actually got a draped string that goes around the edge of the project. We've joined those together with Model Builder. Again, one of the first things that you would do in this course. And then we've used something called paste surfaces, which basically pastes the natural to the design. So we've got this entirely live surface onto which we have created our road design. So you can see here we've got a lot of reconstruction um, using constraints and profile strings down here. And we've got a roundabout design at the top. This is all within the course. Really, what we're looking to do is to focus on what's going on in this particular parcel. The idea being that we're going to resolve the grades that are going through here. So what we're going to do is close down Model Viewer. And just to get a sense of what's happening at the moment, we're just going to put some labels on top of this particular surface. So I'm going to pop up to Label Plan down on the uh, Roads tab here. And I just simply want to create a two, points, um, two point slope label. So I'm going to double click on that particular entry. At the very top, I'm just going to put this as parcel one. I'm going to pick a label style. These are out of the box styles, all of, the, all of which are pre-created with the installation of the software. And we're going to go for a surface slope two points. It says, do you want to pick a surface to obviously reference for the slopes? Of course I do. I'm going to use the pasted surface called combined designed existing. Click on add labels. Now at this point, I'm not going to just simply click across where my retaining wall will go because in a minute I'm able, once we finish the wall, I'm able to change the surface which is being referenced. If I've got a retaining wall through a slope label here, the slope is, is going to be meaningless. So really we're just going to pop in some just some little slope labels just here. You can see 
really we're looking at around about the 10% mark. So we're going to try and achieve 5%. Pressing escape or enter or space bar will present us with the labels that we've created. And uh, yeah, I can go in and change the surface later on that those labels are referencing. So I can go back and check them. So I'm going to leave them as they are. We'll come back to those a little bit later. Really, that leaves us in a position where we're going to look at creating this retaining wall. Now, I'm going to be using grading strings. Now, there is a case for saying here that we could use what's known as a profile string. Um, Certainly, we could just create a, a civil site design or a civil 3D alignment using the polyline we've got here, create a profile string on top, and then go ahead and really apply the same principles we're just about to employ. However, I'm going to use a grading string because it's a very underutilized um, part of the software, and it's actually extremely easy to get your head around and understand and use and manage. So we're going to go up to the pull down here, and we've got a few options. We're going to click on create grading. Now, the way that our software works with any string is that you have an alignment as the basis and you put a string on top. So a road string has an alignment underneath and we put a string on top. Same goes with profile string. Grading string still has the same principles behind it, except the fact that we're using a polyline and that polyline becomes an alignment in the background and we're placing a string on top. So all I'm going to do here is just select the polyline that I've got just on the left hand side. Immediately as we do that, you'll see that we have a little white arrow popping up to tell us the direction of the polyline. If it was going the wrong way, that doesn't actually matter because there is a reverse button here. Now, if you haven't used grading strings before, this is why they're so versatile is because you've got everything in the one place in front of you. Okay, so what we're going to do here is call this top of wall. The template we're applying, I have got a pre-created template, I have to confess, um, mainly because of the fact we don't want to sit here creating templates. There's sort of a bit of an assumption you guys will know how to do that. So I'm going to go for local wall. Just a, just a note really about templates. If you prefix the type of template that you've got first, then the actual template name, you'll find that they'll all get grouped together nicely because they're alphabetically listed. So I put wall first, then wall bottom and wall top. So this is very simple. Um, the, in fact, let's just go back. Wall top. The center line here is the polyline, and then to the right hand side, now bear in mind that we're, we're, we're going down this polyline, so zero is here. So to the right hand side, which is this side, we're going to have a 300 mil flat section, which we'll plot, which is kind of important, and that's called right top of wall. And I've done the same for the bottom of wall as well. This is just to give the wall a bit of substance rather than just being a profile and a profile for the bottom, bottom and top. Um, I've decided to uh, basically just create these two little templates. There could be a case for saying here that you have a template that has a one meter high face on it. However, this face is going to be varying 5% from this point up here or 5% from here. We're going to end up with a varying wall height. So it makes sense to have two strings. So I'm going to pick top of wall, which you've just seen. The target surface for any um, batters we may have or what needs to be referenced in the VGE is going to be the pasted surface. The initial elevation is kind of pre-populated really. All I'm going to do is click on the little picker tool. It will read an elevation off that target surface where I just clicked and you can see it's 37. Okay, it doesn't really matter at this precise moment what that elevation is because it's only going to change very shortly. But leaving that at zero or 100 is not going to be ideal. The spacings value we've got in here is one. So this is how often it will take a cross section. And every one meter is probably overkill, I would say. So every five meters for this particular um, scenario would be reasonable. You've got to just sort of assess your, the length of your polyline, how much work you'd have to do um, having a spacing uh, any smaller than that or really any larger. Corner angle increments and outside corner method are really related to when you have a polyline that is closed and it has a template on it. So this value is degrees. So corner angle increments relates to every five degrees on a 90 degree bend or sharper, the software will actually create a sample line for you. Okay, so this value is very rarely changed. I've not really seen it change very often from five degrees, should be typical. And the method of corner, uh, or sorry, corner method here, this is mitered. So that's why this um, you'd be picking mitered if you want to do. In this scenario, they're utterly irrelevant. This is just a single polyline with one vertex. So we don't really need to be too concerned about these values, but it's worth highlighting what they are. The top right hand corner, we have a box, which is a bit of a strange double negative, but it says no surface creation. Okay, so do I want a surface created along this particular um, grading string? No, I don't. Okay, it's going to be part of a bigger surface or a model later on, not interested. You'll notice you uncheck that box, these values become available. If you do decide or make the mistake of going, oh, I, actually, I 
if I don't want a surface and you've already created one, just go to Surface Manager and delete it. And back, we will now prompt you to delete it. Um, you can't just simply check the box back again. The name prefix that's listed in here is related to every time you create a grading string, if you're creating uh, many grading strings, for example, lots, you could just put LOT and a space. You can see there that that's actually changed my name at the top. But every time I create a grading string, if it's got LOT in front of it, that means I can just type the number and not have to type the whole thing. In my case, not interested in that. Mine's just going to be top of wall. This centerline replacement I will talk about um, later on. It's related to model viewer. Um, I'm actually going to put a centerline replacement code in here. The reason for this is if you create lots of different grading strings, inevitably every single template that you apply is always going to have a centerline. The first code is always centerline. So what this will allow us to do is to render unique or provide unique render materials in Model Viewer by replacing the CL code with code of our choice. Okay, so this doesn't impact your design. This won't impact variations, etc. This is all to do with Model Viewer, and we'll see that in action later. I'm going to click on create update. Once we've done that, really visually, all you're going to see there is the extra code going in on the screen, not a lot else. But because we've created the grading string, we've got a couple of tabs available at the top and the vertical grading editor button, which we'll just have a quick look at now. So there's the vertical grading editor. And if you had a chance um, last week to watch Terry's webcast, he's done a great job of really explaining a lot of what's going on in here. And we will come back to this um, because there's quite a bit of stuff we need to do. So we have um, basically said that this wall needs to be 5%, because bear in mind the falls are going in the direction of these arrows, 5% from the edge of the road. Uh, and it's, sorry, the top of the wall elevation, sorry, needs to be minus 5% from the edge of our road design here. Okay, it's a very hypothetical, fairly generic scenario, but this is a good way of showing you how this works. So a few ways we could do this. Firstly, manually, you know, we could go into the vertical grading tab, add an IP, say, right, I want to add an IP here, please, just using my snaps. And then I manually go away, calculate the distance and the grade and type in the elevation. Okay, that's fine. That's one way of doing it. Second way is this, um, down the bottom of the um, form here, we've got a few tools. I'm just going to delete the IP that I've just created. This one here is sort of the next step up from what we just did, IP by reference. If we click on that button, for sort of individual unique circumstances where you need to um, calculate an elevation from somewhere else within the project, we can use this particular function. So this is pick point for reference. So from where would we like to calculate the grade? Well, I'd like to calculate it from here, please. So I'm just going to left click. This is a stripped down version of a form called the inquiry tool. Now, hopefully, even though my ribbon is grayed out, you'll see it. it's on the utilities panel. And this allows you to snap or click wherever you want in the drawing and it will provide you elevations, depths, pipe inverts, et cetera, about the point where you've just clicked. And then you can actually select the block whilst this is open and grip edit. Now I can't because I'm in the middle of a command at the moment. You can grip edit the, form, um, the block, move it around, and by doing so get updated elevations. It's a great way of finding out elevations on your design. What happens is in this particular scenario, the software highlights in yellow available elevations from my design. Now I'd like to take the right boundary code elevation at the point where I just clicked, and I'm going to select the yellow cell, which is 40.999. I come down to the bottom, click select, and it now says, where do you want a new elevation on your string? So I'm simply going to just left click using my snap. It says, look, you've come down your grading string 69 meters. I'm gonna click okay. This form um, got a little bit of a, uh, a reshuffle um, middle of last year, so it might look a bit different on yours, but the principle remains the same. It says distance from point is 33 meters and the grade will be minus five. So I'm basically grading minus 5% from the edge of the road at that elevation and setting an elevation up here. Click OK. 39.333. So that elevation, whilst it's a snapshot, it's not live, it won't update, okay, um, is a snapshot of minus 5% from the edge of the road. So if I did change the road elevation, I'd have to come in and manually change this. Now we've sort of just shown you really one semi-automated way of setting up the elevations. What we'll do is we'll quickly now just have a look at the vertical design, and then we'll basically employ the same principles onto the bottom of wall as well. So we're gonna click on the vertical grading and it's a button. You can see there, there is our IP that we added in. 
um, that is minus 5%. So it gives you an idea as to you know, where the wall may end up being. Last week, Terry did a great job of really showing you um, how this functionality operates. Really, a lot of it was in the Home tab. What we're going to do is now review and expand on some of which uh, some of the content which he, he looked at. So I'm just going to expand the VG out. So we're going to pop up to the Design Constraints tab. Now, if you've never used Design Constraints before, great, because we're going to introduce you to them using the Vertical Grading Editor. If you have used them before, traditionally, they used to be through this button here, the Design Data Form. There are some videos on YouTube which reference design constraints and it uses it through the design data form. The e-learning that we've got, there's a whole module on design constraints, talks you through them using the vertical grading editor. Now, there are a number of different types in here and we've reworded them for ease, but the type that we're going to be picking is this one here, second one down, project design code. It is by far the most versatile design constraint, okay? It does a lot of what the others do, but it's all kind of packed into the one. So we're going to click on, pick on project design code. Once you've done that, chosen the type, then you click on the little plus icon to add. We're going to call this top of wall minus 5%. Okay. Click OK. Now the form will automatically populate with content at the top here. So don't worry too much if you do start to see line work on the drawing immediately because at the end of the day we're going to resolve it now. Um, one thing I would say is this, if you are using the vertical grading editor and you wonder why you're seeing these two cells like this, there are scenarios where the vertical grading editor on certain people's screens um, is, is a lot, maybe a lot larger. So what we have to do is basically hide some content. So if you find that you can't see it, just move the VG across. So let's have a think about what we're trying to do here. Uh, what we'd would like to do is see minus 5% from the edge of our road projected onto, the, uh, onto our grading stream profile here. So first of all, the chainage range, yep, that's fine. What string would we like to reference or see? Well, that's, by the way, is road one. I don't think I've mentioned the fact that this is, ro this is road one that's going around, the, around the, uh, the front of the lots here. The code that I'd like to use as a reference is the right boundary code. Now that ha happens to be on the template, RBDY. Okay, so we've got that code. Now, at this point, at this point, I could just simply say, right, I'm happy. I just want to see the right boundary code and see how that relates to where my wall is currently positioned. Click apply. Now, two things. First of all, you'll notice you're not seeing anything. No significant change on screen. And there's two reasons for that. First of all, the home tab. If we go to the home tab, you'll see that there is an exaggeration. Now, Terry did a little bit of explanation as to why you might have the exaggeration value being here, and you, yet you've set you know, a completely different value. So have a look at that webcast. He did a great explanation of some of the stuff that's in here. We're going to set this to two. Now, immediately, um, that's helped because I'm get, it's not quite as severe in respect of exaggeration. But there's another problem. I still can't see the constraint. That's due to this value here. So in the design data form, you do not get this option, but this is what's known as a search offset. So how far from the boundary code should this constraint be projected? And that's set at 20. Now these lots are over 30 meters long. So there is no way that that constraint is going to reach my uh, profile here. The reason for this value, and you might get caught by this um, at some point, is due to really scenarios such as this. So uh, in the, uh, the e-learning module for design constraints, we actually get you to project this building pad onto the new left edge of bitumen of this existing road. One of the problems with that is that if this value is set to 1,000, which is the default, you'll notice that the center line of this building pad occurs twice in the same cross section. So if you took a line from existing road and projected it 1,000 meters in this direction, it would cross the center line twice. Okay, that means that it's picking up the center line elevation twice in the same cross section and basically it doesn't really work very well. You end up with what's known as zigzagging. So we might limit the search distance so it only crosses the grading string once. Okay, so this is why that value is set to 20 because in this particular project that was the last value we've used. So what we'll do is we'll come over here and set this value to something reasonable, let's say 40. It doesn't have to be excessive. We can keep it a reasonable number. Click on apply. That is the left, uh, sorry, the right boundary code um, of my road, okay, in association with the top of my wall, okay. What I'd now like to see 
that could be fine. That might be all I want to see. But actually, what I want to see is that, and I also want to see where minus 5% would be from that particular um, code. So up here, you've got a couple of options. You've got lower crossfall and upper crossfall. What we're going to do is provide one of these with a minus 5%. It really doesn't matter um, if you put it minus 5 in this one. The fact that it's lower or upper doesn't make any difference. These are just labels. What I'm going to do is then come over here and click apply. So what we're seeing is lower crossfall, which is 0%, which is the left boundary code. Sorry, I keep saying left boundary code, the right boundary code. Uh, there's its elevation in pink, and then we're seeing minus 5%, and you'll actually see the IP validates the elevation for us. You can see it's exactly at minus 5%, so we know it's in the right place. Now, um, just a bit more on the design constraint. You can deactivate these. So if you don't want to see them, you can um, uncheck or check the upper active and lower active button, hit refresh, and um, you'll see that that will disappear. Oh no, it won't, that's interesting. Let's try apply. Yeah, apply. Refresh is really there to say, hey, some something that was, um, for example, my, my road one right boundary code has changed in its elevation. Refresh is saying, hey, just go and reread it. So if you don't want to see them, you can choose them to be active and not active. I'm making them both active for um, clarity. What you can also do, uh, have a look at Terry's webcast last week, is you can snap to these. Okay, so IP reference up here, we could go and pick one of the references, U for upper, L for lower, and actually snap to them. And then we can use the snap IP tools. Or in addition, you can left click near an IP and say snap to reference instead. So if you've got an IP that you've already edited, really, really good stuff. Is There's only so much time I've had to show you here, but also editing by range. So if you wanted to grab a whole load of IPs and move them onto that constraint, you could select the constraint from the reference and then pick them here. So I haven't got time, unfortunately, to go through all of that. What we're going to do is to take this one step further and have the software do a lot of the hard graft for us using auto profile, okay? This was called compute. Design VC, I think, in previous versions. So um, you may have a different button. Functionality hasn't changed. What this will allow us to do is to take um, our profile and maybe match onto a surface or match onto, for example, a constraint. This is what reference constraint means. It's basically saying match onto a constraint. So I'm going to click on reference constraint. I'm going to put in a chainage range that does not include zero and does not grab the end. Okay, and the reason for that is because we want the start and the end of the wall to actually be matching up to the, um, the, the elevations of the road. So I don't want them to be at minus 5%. So I'm going to skip zero and just put from five to uh, probably about 145. You can play around with these numbers as much as you want. Match onto the, and it's called upper, but we all know that that's actually the minus 5%. Okay, click OK. This button is new. If you didn't see that, um, means you don't get a text file every time you make an, a, an edit or an entry in here. That has now applied minus 5% for me. Uh, sorry, the design onto the minus 5% in the background. Just a word about the IPs. You may be wondering why you've got extra IPs here, sorry, through here, and why the IPs do not match up with the sample lines of the grading string. This is due to how design constraints work, and design constraints operate on the sample line of the reference. So if I go toggle display, section sample lines and turn on the sample lines for road one, click OK. Every single one of these yellow lines has basically been projected out 40 meters at minus 5%. And wherever one of those has, uh, one of those sample lines is positioned, that's where I'll get an IP. So if I move my mouse over to say this IP here in the VGE, if you took that green line tracker and projected it back towards the road, it would line up with the yellow line, okay? So that's how design constraints operate in the background. What we're going to do is now very quickly create the exact same scenario for, row, uh, for the bottom uh, of the wall. So I'm gonna close this down. I'm actually gonna close down the um, uh, grid editor as well. And we're just going to quickly create the second grading stream. So I'm not going to go into as much depth because it's really the employing the same principles we um, took from um, putting top of wall there, which should be bottom of wall, uh, employing the same principles that we did for the top. Different template. This time the template's going off to this side. The target surface, the elevation are fine. I'm not going to be tweaking those. The spacings, however, I will put five. I don't want a surface. Uh, and I do want to put a centerline replacement code. This is entirely optional. You do not have to put this in at all, okay? We're just doing it for purposes of model viewer. Uh, 
Click, clicking create update enables me to get the vertical design. So let's just close down the grid editor and grading string form. We're going to pop into design constraints. We're going to pick our um, constraint that we want, project design code. Click on create at bottom of wall. And then we're going to go plus 5% because this is going to be a positive 5% above road two, which is on the other side. So let's just click on that. Then we go ahead and populate it as we did before. So this time, let's just zoom out a bit. This is row two. So the bottom of the, the, bottom of the wall needs to be a positive 5% from the boundary code here, okay? So let's just go ahead and do that. Before we do that, let's just change the exaggeration because as we've seen, can't see the uh, uh, constraint. You can see that the constraint has just gone in using road one center line. We're not interested in that. What we're interested in doing is seeing row two. And I'd like to see the left boundary code. Okay, click apply. So that's where the left boundary code of row two is currently positioned in relation to my bottom of my wall string. So what I'd now like to say is, well, where would 5%, positive 5% be in relation to my wall in addition? So I'm typing in five up here, clicking apply, and we're now seeing the positive 5%. So that's really where the bottom of my, bottom of my wall should be positioned. So let's just now go and match it up. So we're going to go to the home tab, auto profile reference constraint, I'm going to say from 5 to 145, match on to, again, I've done upper, um, in this case it is actually upper, click OK, apply and exit. Now, a couple of things, first of all, um, the top of wall has actually been created, so what would be nice to say is, well, I'd like to see the top of wall in the vertical grading editor, so I'm going to go back to design constraints, there is one very simple constraint here called show string. That's all I want to do. I just want to see the top of wall string. So I'm going to click on show string, click on the plus icon, and we'll just say TW proj top of wall projection, click OK. And simply we go in and we pick top of wall. Okay, I'm going to pick the color, click OK, and apply. They match up at the ends, kind of doesn't really matter too much, but what I'm now seeing is the design of row two, 5% from that, and the top of wall design. I'm going to do the same with the top of wall as well. So I'm going to ask it to show me the bottom of wall. I'm going to open up the vertical design, pop in a design constraint by picking show string, click on the plus icon, and we'll call this BW proj just for speed. Click OK, and then we're going to ask it to show the bottom of wall. And again, just in red, okay, just for this is great for, for, for context and apply. So there's the bottom of the wall. So now we've done that, and I appreciate I'm going through this very, very quickly. So um, Shane, how are we going for pace and time at the moment? Is, uh, is everything going okay? Looking good, Jonathan. I think the, the pace is good. Uh, everybody may be in awe. I've, I've had one question so far, but- um, That's excellent. Yeah, it's looking that. good. Yeah, Continue brilliant. on. <laughs> Fantastic. I didn't want to spend too much time on the second grading string because really I want to show you how we can start to match things into other surfaces. So um, at the start of the wall, we've clearly got a road surface here which we could match onto. Okay. However, the problem is going to be at this end where we have no road surface to match onto. So how are we going to manage that without basically widening the road? Well, we're going to look at this uh, in, in sort of two, part, two parts. First of all, we're going to use reference surface in the auto profile for the vertical grading of this particular string. So this is the top of wall and at present chain is zero is connecting or sitting directly on top of row three. So what we want to happen is for that elevation there to be at the elevation of our road surface. So to do this we can actually get the software to manage this for us. I'm going to go auto profile. I'm going to click on reference surface this used to be called match to existing, and, and obviously, in fact, it still says existing up there, but absolutely fine, because really, this is about matching to any surface you want. I'm gonna say from zero to one meter, and the reason for that is because all I want to do is grab that IP, okay? I don't wanna capture any other IPs, just wanna grab that IP that's at zero. Match to, just happens to be total model, could be any surface. Click okay, and apply and exit. Right, we can see that that's changed. We can also see the bottom of wall, no longer matches, which means that the bottom of wall also needs a bit of an edit. We're just going to close this down, open up the vertical design for the bottom of wall, 
So you can see here, the constraint is immediately telling us they don't match anymore. We're going to run auto profile, reference surface, zero to one, total model, okay, and apply and exit. Now, there are going to be questions raised, and unfortunately, we just don't have time to resolve this. Questions raised about the transition that we're getting and the tying along the side of these lots, but unfortunately, it's not something we've got time to really go into. But certainly, hopefully, with the principles that and techniques we're showing you in this webcast, you'll be able to go, and work, uh, go away and work some of these things out. Now, the wall matches up at the other end, but we have no idea how it relates to the road design. And we have, as we've seen there, I'm just going to minimize the VGE. No design to connect on to. And this brings us on to something called Surface Extend, which is a very uh, sort of, I'd say, undervalued tool, uh, not necessarily noted as much as it should be. You'll find that the Surface Extend tool, I think on the Civil 3D um, panel, is sitting on the modeling panel here. If not, it will be on the model builder pull down and it's called String Tin Extend. Okay, but it's, it's the same tool, but it will be for the Civil 3D users and BricsCAD users, I think, in the same panel. So what this allows us to do, if we click on it, this allows us to create a dummy surface, which is live. So what I'm gonna ask the software to do is to project the footpath code over to the boundary code and extend that slope and project it out by probably about a meter. Now, we're not exactly tying onto the road design um, by doing this, we are going to be probably a few mil different, but it's so close, it's not really worth, uh, from my professional opinion, not being too concerned about it. The great thing about this is that we're gonna be creating this surface live. So if the road design changes, this little dummy surface we're creating will also change. And by, by doing so, the road, uh, sorry, the wall will be able to re-reference the elevations that are closest to the road. So let's show you how this works. First of all, it says, what string would you like to use? So I'm gonna use road one allows you to pick it from here if you want. The surface name, uh, there is no pref uh, prefix or suffix with the surfaces, so I'm literally going to call this road one right side. That's how it'll appear, it will appear in Surface Manager. It then says what chain it is. Well, let's just go and pick. So I'm going to click on the picker tool. I'm going to pick 150. I, I could just change that number if I wanted. Uh, and let's say, let's pick the end chainage. Let's go, doesn't really matter, 178. So, the next part is asking us, okay, so what two codes would you like to basically combine together and project the slope of? So I'm going to take the right footpath outer code. This is the right side of road one, right footpath outer code, and connect it to the right boundary code, RBDY, which is this white poly white uh, colored um, line work here. And I want you to project that slope by, and we'll just say two meters. And I, yes, I want you to be active, which means that I want you to update if my um, string happens to update and my elevations change. I'm going to click on Create Update Surface. A good example of where you might find this appropriate is if you, for example, you're designing up to the edge of a road, uh, an existing road or some kind of driveway or something along those lines, and you are limited with what information you've been provided, i.e. the surface stops at the boundary and you need something behind, this is a kind of very sort of clever way of just being able to give you that little bit of extra surface to work on top of, whilst there is a very, very slight elevational difference there. Now, just to show you how this looks, I'm going to go to toggle display, row one right side, click OK. Now, I'm hearing someone's microphone, so is there a question on its way, Shane? Jo uh, Jonathan, I thought I just might add to this. Um, those that are really sneaky could insert a very narrow code outside of the footpath or the building line. And you can vary the cross flow of that code. So um, Jonathan was showing an example of 5% grading for the lots. If you added a, a code off the edge of road one and you varied that cross fall and extended that all the way up through the lots, you could actually have variable cross fall um, driven by you through the lots. So yeah, you can get um, quite creative with it and add an extra code. It only needs to be two millimeters wide but you could then flex the cross fall on that and that gets extended out. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. In fact, that was one thing I considered on here was to actually just create a little dummy code called, um, you know, RBDX for extend or something. If you say no, it won't even come out on your, long, on your cross sections. So it's, it's by and large two mil, you won't even see it. And you could basically project between this code to that code and have the same, uh, same principle applied. 
Thanks, Shane. Um, so now we have a surface. Okay, if road one changes, this surface updates. So what I want to do is actually tie the end of this retaining wall, the bottom and the top, back onto this particular surface here. So I'm gonna open up the vertical design and we're gonna go back to auto profile and we're gonna go reference surface. And I'm going to say, trying to avoid the last change here, I just wanna grab the very end. So I'm gonna say 150.1, which is gonna avoid putting an IP here match on and to a thousand, match on to road one, right side. Okay, that, apply and exit. So that's where road one is. Okay, that's where the right boundary code uh, would be positioned. So there's obviously the bottom of wall needs to have the same adjustment. Open vertical design, bottom of wall. What we'll do is the same process, auto profile, reference surface, 150.1 to the end, match onto row one right side okay and apply and exit so as far as the elevations go um, really um, you what you can have the software do is manage the, the, the brunt of your design in the way that we're doing here knowing that if you go and make changes to any of your roads you can come back in run auto profile and let the software match back up to really the, the fundamental part of your design, which is the 5%. Okay, I'm not in any way saying, look, this is a final design, we can go and plot this, this is, this is what you want, okay, because you may decide that certain IPs are not relevant, you need to go in and refine it. But when you're at that stage where the design is, you know, the roads design is pretty much fixed, um, you can have this retaining wall kicking around, as we're just about to show you, go in and change your road design, make changes, get the software to really do the hard work for you, get it to pretty much sort of that 90%, and then you go in and finish it off. So what I'm going to do is just come in and raise the elevation of road two, which in turn is going to change the elevation of road three because they're connected. And then we're gonna see the consequences of this and how we can manage it. So I'm gonna click on the little raise elevation icon. Uh, let's be brave, half a meter, click okay. And as a consequence, Let's have a quick look at um, the bottom of wall, okay? Obviously, the constraint has moved, okay? The top of wall isn't affected by this because it's working from road one, this is working from row two. So traditionally, we go auto profile, apply and exit, okay? So the start and the end of time back in. Now, what you'll notice is that the zero change, because road three got changed, um, I take it back. Obviously, the top of wall does need a tweak because row three's elevation changed. So let's just quickly go in, open up the top of whoops, uh, this open up the top of uh, top of wall vertical grading, auto profile, apply and exit. Really quick way of managing this. I'm going to take this one step further. If you haven't seen threads before and you haven't used them, they're a very very uh, versatile way of managing parts of your design. Rather than me going through auto profile and making sure everything's up to date, I'm actually gonna let the software go and do this for me through pretty much one command. So it's a bit like a macro. If you haven't seen these before, they've been in the software a while, they're on the roads tab. We're gonna click on thread editor. These are an excellent way of assisting you with certain parts of, of, of your certain uh, workflows. Uh, for example, outputting CAD output, getting models updated, plotting cross sections. We are going to elaborate on some of these. What You've got here is all the actions so things you can do then in the middle here is basically the thread where they're all getting strung together in an order so at the top we're going to create a brand new thread i'm going to call this update parcel one click ok you could put a description probably best that you do to try and explain what's going on because every thread will be unique and have a different purpose what we're going to do is keep this really really simple i want the top of wall and bottom of wall auto profiles to be rerun for me at uh, a, a point of my choosing. For example, I've gone and made a change to the road design. So all I'm going to do here is click on the action called compute vertical geometry. And if you have a look down the bottom, it tells you what it does. It basically says, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and just rerun your auto profiles for you without you opening up the vertical design. I'm going to click on add action, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there are two grading strings. Okay, so I don't even have to do Two, two different threads, it's one, one thread, one action, add action. So let's just show you how this works. Um, what we might do is just go back to the vertical design of row two and drop that back down, minus 0.5, click okay. 
obviously if we know the consequences of the that the, the, you know happen with the wall here let's just open the wall up yep needs to be changed okay consequences at the start as well so let's just close it down click on compute thread uh, now um, that was so quick I think it flashed up and nothing you didn't probably didn't see anything but basically there was a green bar that appeared for about a millisecond if I open up the vertical design for the bottom of the wall again there you go Okay, so the, basically the software's within literally that millisecond gone in and done all that work for you. So very, very good, very good example of how a thread can be employed. And I'm going to extend this to basically update my model builder model, then replot my cross sections and long sections of my wall. So there's a lot of stuff we can do in here. So I'm going to leave this just sort of open to one side for the time being. So I want to create a surface which combines the top of wall, the bottom of wall and my roads. And then I want to be able to plot cross sections along my wall which incorporate the lots and maybe the edge of the road and also plot a long section along the wall which shows the bottom of wall. So to do this I'm going to have them combined together. I'm going to use model builder okay so we're going to go up to the modeling pull down click on model builder. Now again if you get a chance one of the first things we do after creating grading strings in the e-learning course is that we tell you uh, all about creating models and how you can create them simply. So I won't go into to a huge amount of depth, but creating a model will simply take the strings in their raw state. So none of this wonderful trimming that Total Model gives you. Um, it will take all of the strings in their raw state and provide them back to you. Okay, and you can go away and edit them. Now it says there no automatic trimming of network is applied to network strings. So that basically means that the curb returns, cul de sacs, everything, you'd basically be manually going through and trimming them up. This one here is saying, hey, we're going to give you a model, um, which is total model with all its trimming, everything being tidied up, and then you can go and add things to it. And that's the one I want. I'm going to call this roads and parcel, and then click OK. Now immediately, because I chose the option which included total model, it's highlighted. So I'm going to go to the include exclude and you can see everything related to the road design is actually already checked, which is what I want. What I want to do is to add my road, uh, sorry, add my wall, top of wall, bottom of wall, and just for ease here, folks, I'm, and for clarity, I'm actually going to add in um, a boundary, uh, the GR development boundary, just to give us a cutoff point here for the design. I'm going to click on build. No, for those of you that have used Model Builder, you'll be familiar with the fact that it's just grabbing all of the strings and all of the codes and simply just joining them together. So we're going to tidy this up, not really to focus on the Model Builder aspect as such, but more just to give us a bit of clarity um, within the project. I'm just going to go over to um, Surface Manager, find the surface called VM Roads and Parcels, go Boundaries, click on Add. We've got this nice red polyline. And we're going to use this as a, a basically a restraint for this um, surface here. Click on build. Much cleaner. OK, so we can see the contours. Um, we've now got a model builder surface. Let's just while we're here, let's go to labels. I'm just going to go up to labels and double click on the entry and change the surface we're now referencing to BM roads and parcel. Update display. Close that down. Lo and behold, it's now referencing our surface and we can see that we've got the 5% going on. As I said, there may be questions raised about how you would manage the elevations around the corners here, but um, really that'll be for you guys to try and work out and hopefully from what we've shown you here, you'll be able to utilize the tools um, that we're showing you. Now, let's have a quick look at model builder, model viewer even, and have a look at this model. Then we'll look at plotting and finish off with the thread. So, this is the design. That we currently got on there and instead of seeing the road design i'd like to see my built model which actually incorporates the road design so i'm going to go up to toggle display and once we're in toggle display we're going to instead of seeing total model i'd like to see my built model roads and parcels road and parcel click ok now you can see here now that due to, and I'll talk about the rendering in a minute, there has been a bit of a change here. We possibly need to just have a quick look at the wall just to make sure that the elevations are correct. So what we're going to do is just going to run auto model and I'm just going to run my thread again, just to make sure click on by clicking on run thread. So I didn't show you this before, but you can click on run threads, update parcel one, compute thread and model viewer 
needs to be updated. So I'm going to hit refresh there. It could be that I have just managed to not get the elevations quite right. Let's just go back and click on the vertical design. It's okay to me. Jonathan, your yes, design isn't uh, fighting with the embankment batters on the, the road by any chance? Yeah, there is no, there are no batters on there. So um, yeah, not entirely sure what um, why I'm getting that conflict. But anyway, the idea is really that these two would be married. It doesn't look like it's actually updated the uh, model builder model. Let's just go rebuild models and then, ref yeah, there we go refresh right so <laughs> there is a step which i had planned to show you which i probably should be showing you now so um the thread doesn't do absolutely everything that we want okay all it does is it tells the vertical design to update but there is a model that is using that string which um hasn't been told to update after the vertical design has been changed so We'll come back to that in a minute, but that's one step that we haven't included in the thread, which we will include. If you did miss that, basically, if you change an elevation on any string on a model builder model, click on rebuild models. Okay, what that does is that says, hey, you've got model builder models, something might have changed, let's go and update them. And that's basically what was needed here. So you can see the elevations of that wall going in there. Um, the reason why I was talking about that code earlier in model viewer um, in the grading string is due to the fact that when you right click, on a grading string, uh, sorry, on a, a triangle with render, rendering on it, the codes that are applied, if this was two grading strings, just simply, and we hadn't changed the codes, what you'd actually be seeing here is the centerline code here and the centerline code here. So at the top, you'd be seeing CL, CL, CL. And again, if you haven't looked at model viewer at all, then don't worry about this too much. Um, but the idea is that by replacing CL, 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 which inevitably is going to be something along the lines of pavement, um, you can replace it with your own codes, which is why we've now got BW, TW, TW, and I can basically uniquely render my wall in the way that it's uh, been done here. Now, really, the last couple of things before we polish off, because I'm, I'm bingo for time, is being able to plot this, okay? Now, plotting a long section, let's just do that first, and then we'll do the slightly more complex one of doing cross sections along the wall. So let's click on long section. Uh, I'm going to left click close to the top of wall click on selected sample sections. First thing I always do is load a style. We don't just pick, uh, begin working with this. You'll have your own style set up, I'm sure. Let's just pick the 250 by 50. Okay, looks pretty reasonable. Um, let's just do a little bit of a zoom. Obviously, uh, this is based on all of the IPs that we're adding in on the design. So again, you're not gonna be necessarily sticking with auto profile and going, I'm gonna have all of those IPs and just press print because you're probably gonna go in and refine the design. However, let's have a look at adding in the bottom of wall. So we're gonna go set up row data. And these are the entries that we've currently got for the existing surface and the design surface. So what I'm going to do is very quickly just edit the design, say top uh, wall, just for speed. You can see how this has been set up. So it's vertical grading from string. This is the string that we're currently using, which is the top of the wall and show me the vertical um, curves and grades. All right, you could choose not to see those. Let's click okay. What we'll do is then add the bottom of wall in the same manner. So I'm going to go vertical grading. Vertical grading from string will be bottom of wall. Show VCs and grades, yep, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Show me the design string elevations and we'll call this uh, bottom of wall and then click OK, and then apply and exit, and update display. Oh, great. So this, unfortunately, is due to the fact that in one of these entries, I've possibly um, picked the wrong thing, but I'm struggling to see why. Have, have, a, have a look at the previous entry, Jonathan, the one above. The one above, yeah, OK. Yeah. The one I above. I think you may have not picked the string. Yeah, because there's no string there. You're absolutely right. Oh, okay. Let's just click on that. String not found. There we go. So my mistake um, really was to not give it a string, um, which really is what I should have done was to actually tell it it's top of wall. Um, and uh, with that, it's obviously gone, well, you haven't got a string, why are you trying to produce a string on screen? So there's the long section, which we can go in and begin to tweak the values of. That was just a quick example of how we can produce um, the long section of the wall, obviously subject to the design that you may do on it. I'm gonna click on uh, plot to layout. There's a slight, little bit more of complexity in relation to cross sections. 
what we're going to do is produce cross sections along the top of the wall um, and we want to see really the edge of the road on either side so what we're going to do is click on cross section plots use top of wall again selected sample sections which is really how often you want a cross section and I'm just going to type a cheeky little command called CSDLAY, which basically sets the colors up of the layers for us with a little lisp routine in the background, which is quite smart. But if you've got your own styles, that's absolutely great. So what we're looking at here is the top of wall, top of wall cross section, as exciting as it is, 10 meters left and 10 meters right. So really, there's a few things I want to see. First of all, I don't want to see just the top of wall. I want to see my new model that I've created. So this is controlled using design. OK, at the moment, that's what we're seeing design. So let's just delete it. Next, we want to see a model. And in version 19, uh, version 20 onwards, I think last year, we've allowed users the fantastic functionality of just picking any surface. OK, and if this surface includes codes from civil site design, it will just pick those up only, which is really what we've got. It's a model builder model with codes. Pick surfaces. We tell it what surface we want. We say whether or not we want a band drawn. Yes, I want a band being drawn, please. We say, do we want a section line? Yes, we do. I'm going to go export design. Now, at this point, I'm just going to click OK. That is showing us the wall, OK, all the way through. Top elevation, bottom elevation only. Not getting all the other um, sort of guff that you get um, in respect of grade breaks. Problem is, I'm not seeing enough of the lot. So, Let's go into settings at the top. And if you are using the what's called legacy, it's about five years, um, five years ago, we sort of replaced it with this cross section plotting. If you are using legacy, this, you, you know, a lot of this stuff you just can't do. Double click on the basic settings, widths and text, and I'm going to say symmetric. So I want these to be 38, and I, I have to know this value <laughs> because when you type 40, they do just creep outside the A1 sheet. So 38 meters left and right at the center line, click OK. Now, um, that's all well and good. Problem is I'm not seeing the existing surface. Okay, now the existing surface, if you're using grading strings, there is a slight tweak that you're going to have to make in the active settings to see more of the surface left and right of the center line with the grading string. Okay, so just to show you, I'm going to click on close, pop back into model, uh, into model space. If you create a string, let's go resample sections just to show you. When you create a row string or a profile string, you'll note that you get section widths left and right. So the software reads the surface 15 meters left and right of the center line. The grading string uses that value, but you'll notice when we create the grading string, there's nowhere to change it. So if you wanted to use a different value for a grading string, I'm just gonna click okay here, and you wanted to see more left and right, this is just really a tip as much as anything, go to active settings, go to row details, and the value of 15, that you've just seen in that form come is derived from the values in here. So I'm going to set that to um, 40 and 40. Click on save and exit. You will need at this point, because the grading string you know, hasn't seen that surface before, I will need just to quickly go edit grading and click on create update. Visually, you're not going to see any difference. Go edit grading on the bottom of wall, create update. So it's basically rereading the surface, but this time 40 meters. So if I go cross section plots, Click on top of wall, select your sample sections. What you're now going to be seeing is up to 40 meters. You can see there, there's the edge of the road. There's the back of curb. There's the footpath, footpath, boundary code. Okay, same goes on the other side. You're now seeing a fully fledged cross section. Okay, just to really polish this off, let's just double click on um, the entry we've added here. Click on section labels, show cross falls. You know, just very quickly, just add in some crossfalls and I'm very, very just picking some generic values here. I'm gonna just, for the time being, just for speed, click OK. And we're getting some crossfalls now being added in. You can refine that and get it to get it to specifically show you where the crossfall values go, but that's just a quick way of showing you how to get those in. So lastly, let's just polish this off with a thread. So what if I want all of this to happen? I'm gonna go plot to layout, which is gonna generate quite a number of sheets. And we're gonna click close, model space. So I want all of this to happen in the background, okay? Once I make a change to the road, I want my wall to be updated. I want my um, cross sections and long sections to be plotted. So let's just go back to threads, thread editor. Let's find our thread, update parcel one. So first of all, um, let's say, well, for example, yep, we've done the compute vertical geometry. 
what we should probably do is use resample grading string. So that's pretty much what we did a, bit, a minute ago when we changed the widths and then we clicked on the grading string, clicked on create update and closed it back down again. So if there is a change, this will do this for us. Add action, pick on grading, top of wall, bottom of wall, and we'll make sure it goes after computing the vertical design. Add action. So they're happening. That's great. Now I want the model builder model to be updated. So I'm going to go compute design model, add action, road and parcels. Go and update that, please. Add action. Now, because I didn't tell it where to go, it's ended up going underneath the first entry. So just always be aware of the order of these going in. So that model will then get updated. Then what I like to happen is, you know, you could go and update, synchronize your labels. Let's go and um, add that action. Bottom and basically the labels then get updated to reference any changes to that surface. Then we'll go and plot cross sections and let's just go top of wall, add that to the bottom of the list. I've seen um, a, a, a particular user, very, very good at this, who's, who's got a string a thread within a thread and he's got 13 odd different things going on in here. Um, really, really excellent use of um, this particular scenario. So, what I've then done is said, right, go and plot my long sections and cross sections. You could um, then refresh model viewer do a drawing cleanup, export the surfaces in XML, no end of different things. Let's click on compute thread. It's quite a bit for it to have to do there. So the plotting is probably the only bit. See, there it is, goes ahead, plots the long section, plots the cross section, we're done. So really, that covers every single one of the points I wanted to cover in this webcast. And I appreciate I've gone sort of a few minutes over time. So what we may do is just hand over to Shane uh, to see if there's any, um, questions that can be answered uh, within this forum. Um, Shane, is there uh, is there anything on the horizon? As is usual, Jonathan, there is much shock and awe. So uh, the questions I'm, I'm sure will come in in a moment. So we are open to questions. Um, there has been one question about showing the lot boundary labels. Um, can lot boundary labels be produced on the roadway cross sections? Just in answer to that, um, if you have line work in the drawing, then when you do your cross-section plot, you can actually ask to pick up offsets at those locations. Mm. And you can also put a label uh, on the cross-section at those locations. We do have a video of that um, in the uh, cross-section playlist on YouTube. So and e-learning. And e-learning. So I'd encourage you to um, have a look at, at those two resources. Um, you'll, you'll certainly find... Um, how you can use it for multiple tools. Um, like the, you could draw a line for guardrail and, and have guardrail present on your cross sections. You could draw a line for, I don't know, trees or line marking or, you know, any other sort of boundary control uh, and have that displayed, um, not just with offsets, but also with some textual information on the cross sections. I'm just going to resume my screen here, but we do have um, in the learning module, very, very extensive, um, videos actually related to what is pretty much the current cross-section plotting. The, the, the playlist on YouTube is fantastic. This is actually a, a workflow where we get you to um, add in the boundaries, etc. So even if you go to the, the, the course here and just look at cross-section plots or long-section plots, a the, the lot of stuff is, um, is exposed within this particular, um, within this, these two particular modules. Yeah. Well, I will, I will talk to the slide and then, and then Jonathan will correct me. But um, there are some great resources here. Uh, what we, you've seen today, Jonathan's recording, uh, should go up onto our YouTube channel in the next 24 hours. Um, mm -hmm. You can see where you can go for that. Uh, the next webcast we've got scheduled um, is really recognizing that most of us are on a stay at home process and, and cloud sharing data. Uh, we actually have Autodesk uh, providing a presentation to you on BIM 360 um, and how that um, integrates with Civil 3D. So um, certainly any Autodesk users and particularly Civil 3D users um, encourage you to come along and have a look and see about, um, I guess, this, this idea of data centralization and data sharing um, across a, a cloud-based um, storage environment. So this is uh, your opportunity to have revision control um, approvals, um, selected sharing, all sorts of things. So uh, if you are sitting at home not doing anything, 7th of May, um, uh, that could be a very good session to, to sit in and look at. Um, we're always up for feedback. So um, 
let us know what you think and there's a resource there for you to have a look at webcasts. Jonathan, did I cover everything? Yeah, thank you. That's been fantastic. Well, look, um, thank you, everybody. Uh, I think we'll, we'll stop the session there, but it's um, been great having your attendance and hopefully you all got something out of this. And thank you again, Jonathan. Fantastic uh, presentation. Pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Take care.